Well, hello again everybody. Well, just the other day I was watching a multimeter review by my good friend and the happiest man on YouTube, Tony Albus. And the multimeter in question was this Venlab and it's the VM600A. Now it just so happens that Venlab actually reached out to me a couple of weeks ago and they sent me an email and they said would you like to do a multimeter review? Well I'm never going to turn down free stuff so I said yes I would be delighted to take a look but as usual I said I am going to give my honest opinion and they wrote back to me and said don't worry about it that's absolutely fine say whatever you think. So they've sent me this VM600A meter which was reviewed by Tony Albus and they've also sent me its little smaller younger brother which is the VM200M. So we're going to take a quick look at them. Now I should actually say you may as well just stop watching my video now and actually go and watch Tony's video where he reviews this VM600A because let's face it Tony's video is going to be much better than this one so you've got no reason to watch my video. Go on off you go. For those of you that are still here because you were too lazy to change channel, I really can't fault you. Let's take a look at the Venlabs VM200M first. The VM200M is a low cost digital multimeter and it retails on Amazon for £9.34 so it really is at the budgish end of what you're going to pay for a multimeter. And Venlabs themselves describe this as being a low cost multimeter that will fit in your pocket. So let's take a look inside the box. So it comes with some test probes here, let's take a look at those first. The first thing that strikes me with these probes is I actually think that the actual handle part is quite a bit shorter than a traditional probe and I'm guessing that that's because it fits in with the idea of these being able to fit in your pocket. And the length of our probe wires is approximately 70 centimeters. The 10 amp rated, I think that the material that they're made out of, I don't think it's silicon but it is relatively flexible. The probe tips themselves do actually feel very sharp and they do actually have this protective overcover for when you're actually using them on a high voltage installation. You can also see that we do have a category 2 rating on the side of the probe here and this says that they are safe to use up to 600 volts. Let's rip open the bag. Well the first thing I notice is a little stand. A lot of these small meters don't actually have a stand so that's quite a nice little feature. As you'd expect the meter does come with a manual which is in both English and Chinese and I have to admit it's actually got a fair amount of detail in it for such a low cost meter so they haven't actually scrimped on that. I can see that printed on the back of the battery cover here it says that the meter meets international standard 610010-1 it's up to 600 volt category 2 it has got a CE stamp on it and it also says that it meets the EMC and LVD which is low voltage directive. I guess we're just going to have to take them at the word for that because we don't know. And having removed the battery cover we can see that it is held in by a single Phillips screw. There's no kind of rubber seal or anything to stop water ingress into the back of the meter. Again probably expect that for a low cost meter and also where the actual Phillips head screw it's just a self tapping screw and that is tapped straight into the plastic so you can expect that to wear over time but again I guess just another thing to expect for a low cost meter such as this one. And we've got some Warrior brand batteries. Well let's face it, can they really be any worse than Duracells? Now for those of you that are dealing with self-tapping screws in plastic there is actually a little trick you can do to extend the life of the thread. What you actually do is you rotate the screw backwards until you feel it click and then you start tightening it. And if you do that it won't start cutting new threads and it will extend the life of the hole that the screw fits into. I can see we've also got a screen protector installed so let's remove that. And looking at the number of positions on this selector switch here we can see that it is actually a manually ranging meter. I have to admit manually ranging meters I just generally despise on principle because I'm far too lazy to select ranges but again built down to a price. Considering the miniature size of this meter the LC display on it is surprisingly large and in fact those digits are just over 20 millimeters in height and the display is beautifully crisp. Well it's almost got perfect visibility from any angle so no expense spared there it works beautifully and of course the LC display is also backlit so let's try that. 
And with the backlight switched on, the LCD appears even more crisp. So absolutely nothing wrong with that, really nice. I don't intend to do a complete review of this meter today because I have to admit I'm more interested in the much more advanced VM600A meter. But we will actually put the meter through its paces and just check that it complies to all its main specifications. And helping me with the testing today for the low voltage DC test I'm going to be using the very excellent PDV S2 Mini which is manufactured by a good friend of mine Ian Scott Johnson. I really highly recommend these, they're a great piece of equipment and I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Now for the higher voltage measurements, the AC, the current and the resistance, I'm going to be using the Keysight 34461A. We're going to be using that as a transfer standard. It's a six and a half digit multimeter and it has been recently calibrated. I'm going to check the meter's specifications in the order in which they've been laid out in the manual. And starting with the DC 200 millivolt range, I'm going to complete all the tests at 50% of each range value. And in this case, that's 100 millivolts. 200 millivolt range, 100 millivolt set, 2 volt range, 1 volt set, 20 volt range, 10 volt set. For the 200 and 600 volt DC range, I'm providing a reference voltage using a high voltage power supply, and we're using the Keysight 3461A as our transfer standard. And on the 200 volt range I've got 99.95 volts set. And finally the 600 volt range I'm going to try to set the power supply as close to 300 volts as I can. And with 300.15 volts set we have a meter reading of 300 volts. In terms of AC voltage measurements, I'm actually quite limited in what I can do, as I don't have any reliable standards and I'm having to use this Variac transformer. And of course, the output from this is likely to fluctuate as the mains voltage to my house will fluctuate. However, I don't think that's likely to be too much of a problem because Equally well, this meter isn't a particularly high resolution meter on AC. In fact, it's relatively poor with 200 volt and 600 volt ranges. But with a 100 volt set, you can see that our measured value is relatively close. And going to the 600 volt range, all I can do is turn the Variac up to its absolute maximum. And with 285.3 volts set, we get 285 volts displayed on the meter. The meter has an AC bandwidth between 40 and 400 Hz. And I'm currently feeding the meter with a 5V RMS 40 Hz sine wave. I'm going to increase the frequency to 400 Hz now. So there's no change in our meter reading between 40 and 400 Hz. So the frequency response is effectively flat. I've carried on increasing the frequency of our sine wave and our meter reading is now 3 dBs down at approximately 4.4 kHz. Moving on to DC current measurement, I've spotted something on this meter that I really don't like. And the thing I don't like is that on the 200 microamp, 2 milliamp, 20 milliamp and 200 milliamp ranges, it uses the same common input connector for measuring volts and ohms. Well, it's not such a problem for ohms, but what's going to happen is you're actually going to accidentally switch this meter onto the current section and you're going to try to measure a voltage. And as a minimum, what will happen is you're going to blow up the fuse protecting the input to the meter, or worst case, if you maybe input a, a higher voltage, you're going to burn out the current range. Now, that's the reason why more expensive meters like this. They have separate sets of terminals for both voltage and current measurement to make it less easy to make such a simple mistake. Feeding our meter with 100 microamps on the 200 microamp range you can see that we're actually in very close agreement with the Keysight meter. Feeding the meter with 1 milliamp on the 2 milliamp range you can see that our two meters again are in close agreement. Feeding the meter with 10 milliamps on the 20 milliamp range you can see that we're about 0.3 milliamps out. Feeding the meter with 100 milliamps on the 200 milliamps range you can see we're spot on. As you can see I've woken up the Kirkusui PLZ300W electronic load and we've got a set of midges dick under 5 amps and our Venlab meter's reading 70 milliamps over at 5.07 amps. The Venlab meter specified up to 10 amps but I've got to admit I'm always very cautious when I'm using higher current ranges 
and I really don't want to damage my key sight so I'm going to take that out of circuit. So we've got just over 10 amps set now and a nice feature of our Venlab meter, it's got an overcurrent alarm so let's turn the current down and back up again. So that works quite well and at 10 amps we seem to be about 300 milliamps over. With 100 ohms set on the 200 ohm resistance range, with 0.5 of an ohm under, with 1 kilo ohm set on the 2 kilo ohm resistance range, we're low by 4 ohms. With 10 kilo ohms set on the 20 kilo ohm range, we're 40 ohms under. With 100 kilo ohm set on the 200 kilo ohm range, we're 300 ohms under. With 1 mega ohm set on the 2 mega ohm range, we're 20,000 ohms under. On to the continuity and diode test mode now. For a jelly bean rectifier diode, we've got a forward voltage reported on the key site as 0.49 volts. And our Venlab meter reports 4.8 volts and you can expect some variation between one meter and another due to the differences in the test current. The maximum forward voltage that I've been able to measure is approximately 2 volts. I've been able to light a red LED with a forward voltage of 1.7 volts but unfortunately I haven't been able to illuminate the amber or the green or the white which have a higher forward voltage. The open circuit voltage for the continuity range is specified as being 3 volts. I measure the voltage under that at 2.257 volts with a maximum current of 0.247 milliamps. The meter specifies a continuity beep at 50 ohms. And we do get that. The beep does have a latching function and a nice amount of hysteresis. Unfortunately the speed of the continuity beep is on the slow side. And for you specification fans out there who want to put some numbers behind the beep reaction time I've got a wonderful gift here sent to me by Ian Scott Johnson and what this does it will actually measure the speed of the beep. Effectively it opens and closes a FET switch very quickly. So on our DMM continuity tester here we can actually increase both the mark and the space ratio so at the moment we've got quite a short mark set at 0.44 of a millisecond let's increase that until the meter starts beeping Okay, starting to get something around the 20 millisecond mark point but it's not consistent, let's go a bit quicker Okay, so I think at 25 milliseconds we're getting a consistent beep. And thanks again to Ian Scott Johnson who made this test possible. Thanks Ian. But to finish with this meter today you can see that it does also have a transistor tester and we're actually measuring the HFE which again is correct. For those of you that want to take a detailed look at the results of my testing you can see that I've got a number of spreadsheets so feel free to stop the video and take a close up look at those. But in summary this meter does appear to meet all its specifications and I think at the sub £10 price point it really can't be beaten. There is a few things that I would like to see done differently. As I mentioned earlier I don't like combining the milliamps range with the general input terminal. And I think the meter would benefit from having a higher resolution AC voltage range because this only has ranges of 200 and 600 volts. Perhaps it could have put 20 volts on there. And as you probably noticed the meter does have DC current but unfortunately it doesn't have an AC current range. But all in all at this price point I think it's a good little meter especially if you need something smaller and more portable and I wouldn't be sorry to have it on the bench.
Let's take a close look at our second meter of the day which comes in the form of this Venlab VM600A. As you would expect our meter comes with an operator's manual and that's got two languages, it's got English and it's also got Chinese in the back of it. Now I had a quick thumb through it early and I'm glad to say that the quality of the English seemed pretty good as is the print and it's all perfectly readable. As you expect the manual provides basic operator's information, also comes with a safety sheet and that describes the meter having conforming to IEC 61010-1 Category 3 to 600 volts and category 2 to 1000 volts. We also find within the packaging a set of test leads, a thermocouple, two spare fuses, we'll talk about those later, and a pack of batteries, along with the meter itself. Taking a close look at our test lead, let's just expose the tips on them. They probably measure a 7 on the ouchiness scale, could possibly be a little bit sharper. The probe tips do come with these odd little shrouds which just push over it. Now I'm assuming that the idea is that maybe you need to cut these shrouds down just to expose the tip, but certainly the tip doesn't protrude uh, past the end of them. So yeah, it does provide protection from stabbing at your fingers, but it would be no good for measuring voltages. And for those that maybe don't know, the purpose of these little shrouds is just to stop you making accidental contact between the thing you're measuring and maybe an adjacent component or chassis because that would generate potentially a very dangerous arc flash. As you'd expect at the other end of the probe lead we've got four millimeter banana plugs and these are fully shrouded and I can actually see that the plug itself is fairly deeply recessed so you've got absolutely no chance of accidentally making contact. The leads themselves feel well, they feel relatively flexible. I don't think they're made from silicon. Let's do the soldering iron test. Oh, we have smoke. So, no, nope, these are just some form of uh, plastic wiring rather than silicon. They won't win any prizes, but I'm sure they will be functional. Let's install our four AA batteries. The lid for the battery compartment is screwed on and that goes into a brass bush so you're not actually going to gall out the plastic when you're changing the batteries so they've spent a little bit of money just providing that detail. Given our meter the old squeeze test it does actually feel pretty robust and solid. I can't detect any squeaking or squealing or crunching when I squeeze all the various surfaces that feels pretty tough and as you can see it does actually come in this bump proof rubber case which it does look as though, yeah, you could actually remove that. These tend to get terribly grubby and full of grease and oil if you use them in industry. So it's quite good to be able to take that off and clean everything. You can also see that on the back of the case here, we've got some holders here for the uh, test probes. These are quite good because it allows you to take one-handed measurements. We've talked about electricity flowing through the body. Always good to make one-handed measurements whenever possible. And now when you want to make contact with something you're actually well away from the probe tip here and that's actually quite a handy little feature and I guess when you're not using the probe probes themselves you can actually also just clip them into there so yeah quite a useful little feature there. The case also has a hole in it so you can actually hang the meter from a nail or a hook but it's also got this large magnet so we can actually stick the meter to a metal surface so let's have a go. So that seems to work quite nicely. I do like to see large clear labelling on a product because often when you work in an industry things get dirty or you might be working in somewhere that's not the best lit so it's much better if all the text on the meter is very easy to read which this is. And of course the LCD screen does come with a protector so we're going to go ahead and remove that. Remember slowly boys, you don't want to rush this. Let's switch the meter on for the first time. The meter has a large crisp and clear LCD display and the text height on that display is about 25 millimeters. And again the viewing angle for the display seems pretty good in all directions. We have a backlight feature and actually the backlight is probably a little bit too bright in that we've got some uneven lighting of the display and it does very slightly wash it out. 
As well as switching on the backlight for the display, if we actually press and hold the button here, what happens is we've got another LED installed on the top of the meter and that lights up to provide some light. If you're actually working in something like a dark enclosure, just moving it around, the LED does seem relatively bright to look at, but it doesn't give out an awful lot of light and for me I'd probably still prefer to have a torch or something like that. The range selector switch here does actually feel very positive and it actually does slot into each of those ranges nicely. And at the front of the meter here you can see that we've also got this little rubber feature. I'm guessing this is just a little bumper, just in case the meter falls onto its face. The meter has four ports for connecting test leads and they're the 4mm banana plug style and unlike the VM200 meter that we saw earlier we can see that they have actually separated the current ranges from the voltage connectors so that's a big improvement. At the time of making this video the VM600A retails on Amazon for £24.64 and that's about two and a half times the cost of the VM200M that we reviewed earlier. So it's probably not surprising that the specification for the VM600 is considerably higher than the VM200. The VM600 is an auto ranging meter which is good because it removes all that tedious switching between ranges and the resolution for each of those ranges is also considerably higher than the VM200 and the AC voltage range is particularly improved in that we now have 5 AC voltage ranges with 0.1 of a millivolt for the 600 millivolt range and a 1 volt resolution for the 750 volt range. The VM600 also has the ability to measure AC current which the VM200 didn't and the maximum current's been increased from 10 amps for the VM200 to 20 amps for the VM600. The resistance ranges for the VM600 are also much improved with a maximum resistance value of 60 meg ohms where it was only 2 meg ohms for the VM200. Not only does the higher price point of the VM600 give us better specification than the VM200, we also gain some additional features. So as well as being an auto ranging meter, we also have capacitance measurement, frequency measurement, we have a non-contact voltage detector and we also have a thermocouple probe used to measure temperature. Starting with capacitance measurement, it's split into six ranges between 6 nanofarads and 100 millifarad with a 4% accuracy plus 5 counts. Unfortunately I don't have any high precision capacitors but what I have got is a range of capacitors here which have been measured using the DE5000 meter. The test leads that the meter comes with are about 600 millimeters long so it's probably not surprising that the stray capacitance of these long leads it does actually cause some meter reading error. So actually to do the capacitance testing I'm going to remove those and instead I'm going to do my capacitor testing using these short wires. Starting with my 10 picofarad capacitor it actually measures 11.9 and the actual Venlab meter reports it as being 16 so it's just slightly high. My 100 picofarad capacitor actually measures 102 and again the Venlab meter is reading slightly high to 129 picofarads. Two very boring minutes later. And finally my 1000 microfarad capacitor measures 920 and it's reported as being 994 on the Venlab here. Now most of these capacitance readings are very slightly high but you're always going to get some slight variation and I think when we actually put them into the spreadsheet we'll find that this meter is well within specification for the capacitance range. A lot of boring math later. Well I can assure you I'm not attempting to pull the wool over your eyes or any shenanigans but I really did have some problems measuring the values of these reference capacitors here and I came to the conclusion that my DE5000 meter here it does seem to report the capacitance is very low as compared for example to this Peak LCR45, the flute meter or my Peak ESR70, it reports everything slightly low. Now 
when it comes to measuring capacitors probably all these meters are doing it slightly differently using different frequencies and really I don't know which measurement is right or wrong so I'm not sure but what I did do is I actually repeated all the tests using this LCR 45 as being my reference and when I did that the actual Venlab meter did actually work well within standard so yeah you pays your money takes your choice the VM600 did show some inaccuracy when trying to measure the 10 picofarad and also the 100 picofarads but we're not going to hold that against the meter because it isn't really designed for be measuring such low capacitance values. Anything over a nanofarad the actual Venlab works absolutely fine. Now my everyday go-to meter is a Flute 175 and for the record this is also incapable of measuring those very low picofarad values whereas the VM600 will attempt to measure a 10 picofarad capacitor although it is reading high. At 100 picofarads it's also measuring high but it is actually doing it and for the 1 nanofarad capacitor it's actually more accurate than the Fluke. On the top of the VM600 we've got a non-contact voltage probe so I'll just take this live wire move it over to the probe and we can see it really isn't very sensitive. So we get a bleep and an amber warning light when the cable is relatively close but when it's very close that does turn to red. But I have to say I think it is rather insensitive. The VM600A also has a useful built-in frequency counter and that's split into seven ranges between 9.999 Hz and 9.999 MHz with an accuracy of 1.5% plus 5 counts. And I found that the frequency measurement was accurate across all ranges and actually considerably exceeded the specification and worked reliably up to 20 MHz. For those of you that might be interested in the control of heaters or maybe the speed of motors. The VM600A can also measure the duty cycle. The signal source that I'm using today is a 1 kilohertz square wave and it allows me to set a duty cycle between 20 and 80 percent. If I increase the duty cycle I find that the Venlab meter is perfectly accurate with the generator. And using my internal up temperature calibrator it does appear that the thermocouple is also quite accurate. <laughs> Our DC voltage range is far exceed specification. I was able to test the VM600 up to 300 AC volts and it was very accurate on all ranges. Taking readings at 10 Hz and 1000 Hz the meter comfortably exceeds the specified frequency range and the meter was 3 dBs down at 2085 Hz. <laughs> I checked all six of the meter's resistance ranges between 1 ohm and 30 meg ohm and again I found the meter exceedingly accurate. Starting with the less interesting current ranges we've got about 0.99 microamps set and the Venlab meter is reporting 0.9 microamps which is correct. At 10 microamps the Venlab reports 9.9 .9 microamp. At 100 microamps the Venlab reports 99 microamps. And at 1 milliamp the Venlab reports 0.998 milliamp. At about 5.9 milliamps the Venlab meter over ranges on the microamp range so we're going to have to go up a range. With 9.9 .9 milliamps set the Venlab reports 9.97 milliamps. With 100 milliamps set the Venlab reports 99.8 milliamps. At 1 amp the Venlab meter reports 1 amp. Before moving on to the 10 amp range, got to remember to do this. Time to test the 10 amp range now and in the hope that something may start melting we've gone ahead and plugged in the original test leads that the meter came with. 
With just over 10 amps set on the key site here, you can see the Venlab meter is in close agreement and it's also started to bleep to warn you that we're at the normal maximum current for this meter. Now it does have a 20 amp function, but you can only use the 20 amps for a short time. As you can see, I'm now maxing out my power supply, but it does agree with the Venlab meter at about 20 amps. But these wires are now starting to get quite hot and I think if we were to leave this on for more than a few minutes it would probably start melting the leads. However, I'm not going to blame the meter for that. It does say very clearly in the instructions that if you're testing currents of greater than 5 amps you've got to limit the amount of test time because these are really getting toasty. In fact, they're becoming very soft and flexible. So let's just terminate the test there. DC current measurement proved accurate if not boring with no fire even at 20 amps. <laughs> AC current measurement again proved very accurate but for today I was only able to test up to just 2 amps. And finally for today we'll take a look at the continuity ranges starting with diode test. Well that seems to work fine. Can we light up an LED? Red lights up brightly. Amber, get nothing. Green one is lighting very dimly. But the white one, no problem. The voltage output from the meter on the continuity test range is 3.25 volts at a maximum current of 1.54 milliamps. The VM600 has a two stage continuity indicator. At about 60 ohms, we get a red light to say we've got a near short circuit. And anything below 40 ohms, we get this yellow indication, and you can also hear the bleeper sounding. Having looked at other online reviews for this meter, people complain that the beep speed is very slow. However, I think it's actually pretty good. And with the aid of Ian Scott Johnson's DMM continuity tester, we can actually check that. With the mark set to 1.5 milliseconds, the meter isn't beeping, let's increase that. Well, at 1.9 milliseconds, it does seem to work reliably. I don't think that's bad. So having finished all of our testing for today, what do I think about the Venlab VM600A? Well starting off with accuracy, this is a 6000 count multimeter which easily exceeds accuracy figures for all ranges and in terms of accuracy I really can't fault it. Although it isn't particularly sensitive, I'm sure that some people will enjoy the feature of this non-contact voltage probe, although personally I really don't like them and never use them. And I think the same is really to be said of the little lamp on top of here. Again, maybe certain situations you need some extra light, but it's not a particularly good light. And uh, yeah, I think I'll stick with my head torch. I do really like the very large, very crisp and clear display. The backlight does work, although it does have a tendency to slightly wash out the display and it's not particularly even. I also think that the uh, firmacouple probe that the meter comes with, some people will find those useful. I certainly do use firmacouples, nothing better for checking those power transistors. I like the fact that the voltage ranges are fully separated from the current ranges. Of course that is only what we would expect, but it is good that this meter has got a 20 amp range. And I think those of you that maybe mess with automotive applications, you know, higher current applications on cars, vehicles or trucks, 20 amp range is quite a useful thing to have. But the meter itself is more than capable also on its microamp range. I also do like this two stage continuity indicator lamp. Often I work in noisy industrial environments and some visual indication is a really good thing to have. And I think the reaction time of the meter is relatively fast and it is of course latching so we don't get any of those annoying little squeals. The capacitance range and also the frequency range do work very accurately and again another nice feature. Today it's not unusual for even very low cost meters to be of the true RMS type 
but I remember back in the day when this was something that you had to pay for if you could get it at all. So again, that gets a brownie point for being true RMS. Although not at all exciting, the actual bail stand on the meter does actually work quite well and it does support the meter and uh, it feels very positive in that you can push the bush buttons on here without any worry that the meter is going to be pushed backwards or in fact fall over, which is not to be said for some meters. And despite the meter's relatively low cost, I think it is well featured with its non-contact voltage probe, it's got a firmer couple and frequency measurement is useful to have and I also like the fact that it will measure duty cycle. And no doubt that some users will find this Prince Albert detect ow, very very useful. So for the keen DIYer or starting out electronics engineer I've got no hesitation in recommending this meter. Unfortunately there is always a but and that butt comes in the form of these little 20mm glass fuses which I actually drew your attention to at the beginning of the video. When it comes to these very low cost digital voltmeters, Fenlab aren't alone in using these small 20mm glass fuses. And if you're working on electronic equipment that's maybe fed by an internal power supply, or even if you're a DIYer working in the domestic situation. I really wouldn't have any reservations in recommending the meter. The problem is, is that this is actually sold as being a class 2 and class 3 meter and the actual marketing does show this to be used in an industrial application. Personally, I wouldn't feel adequately protected working in something like a free phase or a distribution panel, some type of panel where maybe the perspective fault current is very high because I really don't trust these fuses to actually break quickly or safely. And if you were to look at something like a much more expensive fluke meter, and I do mean much more expensive, we're talking several orders of magnitude more expensive than the Venlab, what you're going to find in here is you're going to find some high rupture capacity fuses. And if, like me, you've ever tried to measure the fault current of the national grid, you'll find that when you have to replace these fuses, they are actually very expensive. Typically, they cost around £10 or more. Now, I'm sure that Flute wouldn't actually choose to fit these £10 fuses if a simple 20mm glass fuse was adequate. And the problem I have is that I just don't trust that these fuses are adequate to be used in a Cat 2 or Cat 3 environment. So I'm going to reach out to Venlab, I'm going to ask them about these small glass fuses which are only 20 millimeters long and just say can you justify this cat 2 and category 3 rating. Now unfortunately I'm not an expert in meter specification but I would be interested to know who's done the compliance testing for this meter and if it does in fact meet category 2 and category 3. But for today I think that'll do. As always, thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you very soon. Bye for now. Take the High Road is back at the same time, 10 to 3, next Friday.